We're going to be manual muscle testing flexor digitorum superficialis. I'm going to show my partner the action. We're going to flex at the fingers, leaving that distal phalanx straight. And then we're going to add the flexion of the wrist and finally a little flexion at the elbow. Okay, can you repeat that one more time for me? So fingers first, wrist second, elbow last. Perfect. For the break test, since we're primarily focusing on the fingers more than the wrist and the elbow, what we're going to do is bring our person's fingers so that those distal interphalangeal joints are left straight. And I'm going to cut my fingers in there. So about one to two fingers, depending on the size of the hand and your fingers. And we're going to have her in just a little bit of wrist flexion. So what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to be trying to open up her finger joints, but I want her to try as best she can not to curl those distal phalanxes. Mm -hmm. Good. Like so. And she's going to hold that position, and I'm going to pull against her for five, four, three, two, and one. We're going to start with the fingers fully open. And she's going to pull against me, trying to keep those fingers straight. Excellent. And wrist flexion at the end. Good. So that was the concentric for flexor digitorum superficialis. Now for the lengthening of it, again, because it crossed the elbow, this is going to get a little bit tricky. Um, but what I'm going to do is hold her elbow in extension. Where I'm placing my fingers is going to be so I can extend the metacarpal phalangeal and proximal interphalangeal, but leave the distal tips bent. So I want you to try and relax your hand as much as you can for me. So as soon as she relaxed her hand, you can see those fingers left in flexion, and then we will add in the wrist last. So we have extension of the wrist, metacarpal phalangeal and proximal interphalangeal with the distal tips still flexed and relaxed. That will be the length position for flexor digitorum superficialis. We're going to be going through the manual muscle test for flexor digitorum profundus. So I'm going to start by showing my part in the action. We're going to curl to make a fist and add wrist flexion. What we're going to make sure is that forearm does not leave the table. So we can go all the way through that action. Excellent. So superficialis would have action and flexion of the elbow. Profundus does not. So we're looking at just fingers and wrist. Let's do that one more time. Good. For the break test, I'm going to be challenging that distal interphalangeal joint as well as the rest of the hand. So what I'm going to be doing is going basically tip to tip of all of the fingers while she's in a curled position and my hand will be up against the back of her wrist. So I'm going to ask her to not let me move her as I kind of pull and try to lengthen all of the fingers out. Three, two, and one. So again, we went through a five second isometric contraction in that. Now it might be a little bit tricky to start, but I'm gonna to try to resist each one of the finger individually. She's gonna curl up against my finger pressure all the way, making a tight fist. Go ahead. And now adding that wrist at the end. Excellent. And so that would be the concentric component for profundus. The last part of this is going to be going through a length for it. So we do not need to include the elbow this time since it's originating on the ulna. So we'll be extending the wrist and all of the finger joints. So I'm gonna add some bend in her elbow. I'm gonna take my finger or thumb or some variation of the combo and I'm gonna be putting my pressure across all the distal phalanxes, lengthening all of them and then adding in the wrist last. And there's our length position for profundness.